Hey guys, this is Will Roundtree, your FICO certified credit specialist, author of two books, Credit is King, as well as full-time CEO, The Shit They Don't Tell You. But more importantly, I want to take you on this journey about financial literacy, the importance of credit, how to understand credit, and how to get to that money. Let's go. Hey guys, Will Roundtree here, coming to you, giving you information on how to position yourself to purchase your first home. Look, this has to be one of the most enjoyable feelings to, to be able to purchase your first home. You know, I can remember, uh, you know, when I first had aspirations of being able to purchase my first home and my credit started in the dumps. You know, I remember moving to Las Vegas in 2005 and couldn't even rent an apartment without having to put down three times the deposit. And after I put down a deposit, it was almost like putting a down payment down for, <laughs> for a home. So I told myself, look, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. So I said, I need to get a different result here. And so I decided to position myself to get in position so I can purchase my first home. You know, And so when I first had aspirations of this, I had a 410 credit score. But what I did was is I sought after information. I educated myself. I got access to new information. So this way I can get access to be in a better position to purchase my first home. Now, I often talk about the three Ps. You may have heard me talk about this. You want to be in position to have the power to purchase. So it's really all about positioning. So if you want to purchase a home, let's say in the next 30 days, you just have to make sure that you're in position. And typically, you know, depending on where your credit is, your positioning time frame may take longer, which is why you want to plan properly. And so, but that's what it's about. But what I want to talk to you about is what does it look like to be in position to purchase your first home? You know, what's the steps? What's the process? Is it easy? Is it hard? All of those good things. Well, let me tell you this. What if I told you that being approved for a home is actually easier than being approved to get a credit card? True story. You know, now, at one point, all you needed was a 580 credit score. Now, things have changed, you know, because information changes. You know, they say information changes every 18 months. Well, so does the bank lending guidelines. Now, it doesn't mean that it's impossible. You just have to conform with the time. And that's why it's important to always be able to position yourself to get access to updated information, which is why we're putting together this video for you here today. So now, what does this look like? Again, you want to purchase your first home. Whether you're the first in your family, you're the 10th, it doesn't matter. It's all about just, first of all, having a plan, okay? Because remember, when you're going from renting to purchasing, there's going to be other expenses, but that's why you plan properly. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you from a credit standpoint of how to get in position and how you know simple it is. So whether you have good credit, bad credit, excellent credit, uh, no credit, it's really simple to get in position. So now, minimum, most banks want you to have at least a 680 credit score. Now, for those who may not know if this is good, bad, or low, or not, this is actually fair. It's a fair, you know, it's fair. Next thing you want to do is you want to have at least two years of your tax returns. Two years of your tax returns. Now, you may have told yourself, I haven't filed taxes in three years. Well, you can actually go find a tax specialist and they can go back and file your taxes. Now, here's the thing that I want people to understand about when you're filing your taxes, okay? You want to have a tax specialist who is more of a consultant. What do I mean by that? See, you have some tax preparers or tax specialists or CPAs or accountants. There's different levels, believe it or not. Their whole goal, depending on their level of how consultative they want to be, is to try to get you the biggest tax return, okay? And that may be your aspirations, but you have to pick one or the other. This is what I mean. A lot of times, in order to get a huge refund, you have to expense most of your income. What does that mean? So let's just say for the sake of math, uh, you and your spouse made 100 grand for the year, okay? After all expenses, you wrote off a lot of expenses. Now you're showing 40,000 because you wrote off over 60,000 of your income. All right. Now, what happens is, is you have what's called your AGI, which is your adjusted gross income, which is only 40,000. So when you go to the, 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 the lender 
and you tell the lender, hey, I want to buy a house, and they ask, what's your income? And you say 100. No, it wasn't 100. Your income was 40 because of your adjusted gross income. Remember, they wrote off 60,000. So now a good tax specialist is going to ask you, are you looking to be approved or purchased or do any of those things in the next two years? Because if so, they want to make sure that they file your taxes properly. This is especially important for my 1099 independent contractors. So for those who may not know, you have W-2 income, which is where you go to work, you get a paycheck and they take the taxes out for you. Or you have a 1099 independent contractor where you may work for someone independently. And let's just say your rate of pay is whatever it is. Let's just say uh, uh, for the year for working with them, it was 50 grand. They're going to pay you the entire 50 grand over the course of 12 months. And it's up to you to be responsible for the taxes. This is why you want to have a good tax specialist, because they're going to show you how to stay compliant. And so the downfall, why a lot of people at times aren't able to position themselves to get that first home. Yeah, they have a great credit score, all those things. But after the 50 grand, they write off everything and they only show $10,000 as their adjusted gross income. So this is where, you're, again, your good tax strategist comes in and say, hey, Will, you want to make sure you show enough income so you can qualify for that home. OK, very, very important. You want to make sure for two years your income is strong enough. So this is what I recommend you do. This is why you want to plan. You want to plan. Everybody write the word down plan, because unfortunately, a lot of times we'll get an ideal overnight and we'll just go, you know, react, which is nothing wrong with that. But if you hadn't planned prior to, your reaction is going to come up a little short. But if you've been planning and positioning yourself over the past three to five years and you come up with that idea, now you can go and execute. See, it's a big thing between reacting and executing. Think about that. So you can now execute because you've been filing your taxes properly. You have a good tax strategist. You've been uh, you you haven't been expensing all of your income, and that's whether you're a W two employee or a ten ninety nine. Okay, so you have the good credit, you have the income, you have credit, you have the income, you have the taxes. Next thing is job history. Job history. Now, a lot of banks want you to have at least a two year job history. Now, that doesn't mean that that's set in stone. Some will let you go back 12 months. It really depends on the program. See, you may or may not know there are a lot of programs out there for people to be able to purchase a home. You know, now people make people come to me all the time and say, hey, Will, I'm looking for a first time home buyers program. First time home buyers is really just a jargon, meaning you're buying your first home. And what does that look like? So you can actually go and purchase your first home and get what's called an FHA. Federal Housing Association, which is backed by the government, where all you have to do is put down 3.5% of the purchase price. Your down payment only has to be 3.5%. What does that look like? So if you bought a home for $100,000, all you have to put down is $3,500 plus closing costs and all of those things. So typically you want to try to save, you know, about up to $10,000 for the purchase of this home. Not saying you're going to need the entire 10, but you rather you always want to save for just in case of emergency situations. You never know what could happen. You may have to, you know, uh, uh, put an earnest deposit down for those who may not know what that is. Meaning when you go and purchase a home, you love it. You and your spouse went and looked at it. The kids already have their room picked out. The dog has where he's going to put his or her <laughs> dog house at in the backyard or whatever the case may be. And you say, you know what? We want this house. Well, in order to take it off of the market, so this way no one else can bid on it, you're going to have to put down an earnest money deposit. They call it an EMD. And that EMD for this property may be $1,000. Excuse me, $1,000. So you send $1,000 to what's called the title company. They hold it in escrow, which is a mutual account between all parties who are involved in purchasing this property. And then that takes this property off of the market. Now, while that property is off of the market, you now have a time period to do your due diligence 
And I know this may be a little high level in some areas, but I, I want you to just know what to expect during this process, okay? You take the house off the market, short time. You have a contingency period. That's where you can do your due diligence. So you're going to go get an inspection, the inspection to make sure there's no foundational issues, the roof isn't about to collapse in, nothing is going to be a surprise. And then you're also going to get an appraisal. The appraisal is going to evaluate the property to make sure that that property is worth whatever they're trying to sell it for. Meaning, let's say the homeowners is selling it, the previous homeowners want to sell it for 100,000, but the property is only worth 80. Well, the bank is going to only finance up to the percentage minus the 3.5%. Because remember, you still have to put your down payment. And so if they're only going to finance up to that amount, but they're selling it for 100, you have to come up with that difference. And so I want you to understand these things so you don't have an uh, 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 aha, I got you moment. Because trust me, <laughs> we've all had those before. you know. And so understand, you want to get that appraisal because... If they're selling it for 100 and appraisal comes back and they say, yes, the appraisal is solid, this property is worth 100. Matter of fact, it's worth 120,000. And if they're selling it to you for 100,000, you now have what's called equity. Equity is the spread between what the property is, uh, what you owe on the property, what the property is worth. And if there's, and let's say the property did come back and it's worth 120,000. You're buying it for 100. That means you have 20,000 worth of equity, which you at some point can immediately tap into, which means you now, your home is now your bank. Think about that. At any point, you can tap into this $20,000. Now, let's say you purchase that house, okay? 20,000 in equity. As you pay into that mortgage over time, that equity not only increases because the value may increase, but also your payment is driving the month, the, the amount of what you owe. So in over five years, that equity could easily turn into $40,000. So let's say you want to go and start that business. You have $40,000 to tap into. So that's a whole nother lesson that we could talk about at some time. But right now, I want to talk to you about what you need to be in position to purchase your home. So you have the good credit score. You have the income. You filed your taxes properly. You have the job history. So now what does that next step look like? Next step is, is you're going to go and find a lender. You're going to go to a lender. It can be your bank. You can find out if they do home loans. Your lender is going to pre-qualify you to see up to how much of a home you can purchase. Again, remember, credit is one of the major barometers as well as income, as well as, well, the taxes fall under the income because based upon your adjusted gross income, that's how they're going to determine how much you, you know, all of that stuff. Now, people ask me all the time, well, what if I have student loans? Can I still qualify? Yes. Now, the amount, the amount of debt that you have can contribute to what's called your DTI, your debt to income ratio. So you do have to factor all of those things in. Now, some people may ask another question. Well, Will, what if I don't have any credit? How do I position myself to qualify for my first home? And we have strategies to show you how to do so. I'll give you one. So let's say you have what we call a ghost credit file, meaning you have no credit, never had credit before. You can actually have a family member, a relative, a friend, someone who you trust, and that, of course, trusts you, add on to your credit report what's called an authorized user. Essentially, you become an authorized user on their credit card. What does that look like? So let's say they have a credit card, has a $5,000 limit. They call their bank. This is my bank. Hopefully the bank is larger, <laughs> larger than that. They call their bank. They ask you, they say, hey, I want to add Will to my credit card. Uh, usually about seven to 10 days later, the card is going to come in the mail and it can go back to the actual card owner. That doesn't mean I get the actual card. All I'm doing is renting this credit history. I'm renting this credit history, okay? Because the reason it's important, especially if you have a ghost or what's called a blank credit file, the banks want to see that you have some type of activity on your credit report. It's not that you have bad credit, you just have zero credit, okay? So I get added on to at least two of these authorized users, 
Now I then can go out there and establish my own credit history because I can't do it with just authorized users. So then what I'm going to do is go to and apply for my own uh, secured or unsecured credit card. For those who don't know the difference, secured means I have to put money up. So if I'm putting up $300, they're going to give me a line of credit for $300. That's secured credit. Or I can apply for an unsecured, which means my credit score or profile is strong enough to where I can go to any one of the credit card companies out there, and there's hundreds of them. Now, I may not get a high limit, but that's okay. Most banks just want to see that I have at least three to four trade lines reporting. And a trade line is anything that's an active account on your credit. So the authorized users, remember, I have two. That's two trade lines. Then I'm going to go out there and apply for two of my own credit cards. I may not get a high limit, but that's okay. So that gives me my four. So now, again, I can go to that lender with my ghost file. I have a 700 plus credit score. The lender is going to pre-qualify me. And let's say they pre-qualify me for $150,000. That means I can go house shopping for a house up to $150,000 to where all I have to put down is 3.5% of the purchase price. Now, you may tell yourself, 3.5%, that's not a lot. Absolutely. You know, some of us get tax returns that are six, seven, eight thousand dollars $8,000. That's enough for you to be able to purchase your own home. Think about that, you know, even if you had to save the money up. Now, there's also programs in a lot of states that offer down payment assistance, but you have to go out there and do the research. Every single state, every single city, all the municipalities have different programs. And you'll be surprised how many of those city government funded programs go unused because at the end of their fiscal year and that money gets unused, it goes to no one. And so this is why finding a, not only a lender, but you also want to find a realtor. To help you because they're going, they're going to know all of the programs. The realtor is going to help you find the programs to get into the house, to, to, to find the, the down payment assistant programs to where some of them will give you up to 5% that is forgivable. But it all starts with one just wanting to go out there because I talk to so many people who are scared to pull their credit, to at least go and get pre-qualified, to go and speak to a lender. And so let me give you some advice. Let's say you don't have the best credit today. What I personally recommend is that you still go to that lender and let them pre-qualify you. You're going to ask yourself, well, Will, if I don't qualify, would I, why would I go and let them run my credit and my score drops? Well, they're only going to pull your credit once. One credit pull isn't going to drop you 100 points. So first of all, let's get that mentality out of our mindset. The reason you're going to go to that lender, even though you may not be in position today, is they're going to give you what I like to call your blueprint, meaning they're going to tell you exactly what you need to do to a T to get qualified. So whether it takes you one week, one month, or one year, at least you know what you have to do. And now you have that plan to go and execute. Remember, it's a difference between reacting and executing. And even if you're not in position today to have the power to purchase today, you go to the lender. The lender gives you the blueprint to eventually now you can get in position to execute. And so it's literally that simple. So I want you, let's, let's, let's get over the facade. The house purchasing a home is this big, grandiose uh, uh, you know, goal that is out of reach. And it's not, you know, my personal belief is that home ownership is truly where our individual wealth starts. Because again, remember you purchased a home at a hundred thousand. It's worth 120. You have $150,000 as we talked about earlier approval. So I was right off top. You have enough to purchase that house. But as you're paying into that property, you're paying your monthly a uh, mortgage every single month. You already had 20,000 in equity. Keep in mind, as you're paying your payments every month, the payment, the principal of what you owe on the property decreases. Now your property is worth 40,000. And now you have at least a minimum of $40,000 that you can tap into at any time. So whether you want to send your kids to college, whether you need to pay some debt down, we've shown people how to use their house as a strategy to pay off some debt pay some student loan debt off. 
to start that new business. You can use it to invest in another investment, real estate, income producing property. But it all starts with understanding how ridiculously easy it is to get in position to purchase a home. Now, the definition of easy means it's also easy not to do. You may ask yourself, well, how can it be easy not to do? Because it can be easy to say, you know what, I don't qualify today. Why would I go let a lender run my credit? Again, because you want them to give you the blueprint. You, it's easy to say, well, uh, I don't have the money right now. Well, it's a ton of different down payment assistance out, uh, down payment assistant programs out there. We just have to do the work individually, meaning you, to go out and get the information. You know, I once learned that whatever it is we want, that we truly want, we'll find the information if, it, if it's a necessity. So imagine how powerful it can be you being that first time home buyer in your family. You know, imagine putting yourself in position that always have access to over $40,000 of equity into your home. You know, because guess what? This, this process can be repeated multiple times to next time, next time, you know, uh, or next time you look up, you now have five properties within your family portfolio. That's how we create true wealth. And so purchasing your first home does not have to be as painful as public speaking. <laughs> Trust me, I know. Buying your first home does not have to be ridiculously hard. It's not even a long drawn out process. It's really just about having that blueprint so you can execute. But it all starts with you believing that it is possible. And so what I want you to do today, right now, pick up the phone, contact your local lender, get pre-qualified and see what you qualify for. Because I can almost promise you most of you qualify today and don't even know it. And I'm willing to bet, well, I can't bet you anything because I don't gamble, but I'm willing to uh, almost assure you that most of you qualify today. So again, family, I appreciate you taking this journey with me. Uh, and I'm just speaking from experience. Again, remember, I went from a, a 410 credit score to purchasing my first home to now owning multiple real estate investment properties all across this country. And I know if someone like myself can do it, each and every last one of you can do it. So if this information was of value to you, make sure you click the link below, uh, subscribe, like, share, comment, pass this information to your friends. Because again, this is where true wealth starts, home ownership. Most People who have started businesses started their businesses by being able to have access to equity for their, from their homes. And so, and you may tell yourself, well, Will, what if I have bad credit and I don't know how to repair it? Well, guess what? I'm a two-time author. Book Credit is King, which is going to be a manual that's going to show you how to restore, repair, rebuild, all that stuff to your credit, literally, uh, in a matter of a few weeks to a few months. It may take you a year, but it's all time that we have to use anyway. We might as well use it positioning ourselves. So again, family, my name is Will Roundtree, and I'll see you at the top.